So it's a fascinating book, uh, something of a sobering book, I must say, because you went from your Ph.D. through a tour up a Capitol Hill with Harry Reid and Ed Markey and then on to, be, to the, the regu Nuclear Regulatory Commission in short, pretty for short order. Your job was to keep us safe. Did you do it? Well, I did my best to do it, but nuclear is a very difficult technology. And one of the experiences I had when I was chairman was dealing head on with those safety issues when I found myself in the middle of dealing with the Fukushima nuclear power plant accident. And so here I was you know, with ex expectations for nuclear power to be this safe, stable technology. And all of a sudden I was in the middle of dealing with the worst nuclear accident really in recent times. And it was a, a catastrophic accident. 100,000 people evacuated from their homes. The entire economy of Japan suffered because of that accident. So it it really was a significant event and, and one that reminded me that accidents weren't a hypothetical. They were something that happened really to nuclear power plants. Could Fukushima or something like it here happen here in the United States? Absolutely. And all the nuclear power plants in this country, they operate really on this precipice of normal routine operation on one side and catastrophic accident on the other. And that's, it's, it's unclear exactly when kind of you'll fall to one side or the other, but it's certainly possible. And in fact, right after the Fukushima accident, I found myself in, in the Midwest really surrounded by floodwaters as I toured a nuclear power plant that was on the verge of really sliding into one of these kind of catastrophic accidents. So the way it happens here will be different, but it's certainly possible with any of the plants that operate in the U.S. So Greg, I want to talk about something very much in the news right now, and there's the so-called Green New Deal that Congresswoman uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Senator Markey have really been behind. And we'll play a little bit about what she had to say when she was announcing this. We need to save ourselves, and we can save the rest of the world with us. That is why we should do it. And that's why we define the scope of this resolution to be so broad and to be so comprehensive. Because we are, we are outlining the Green New Deal. And in the spirit of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, we have the Green New Deal and we have Green New Deal projects. So from what you know about the safety issues, as well as the, let's be clear, environmental issues as well, should nuclear power be part of the Green New Deal? Well, David, I don't really think it's a question of should. I think it's really a question of can. And if you look right now what's happening in the nu nuclear world, nuclear power simply can't meet the goals of the Clean New Deal. When I was chairman, we licensed four new reactors in this country. And today, if you look at what's happening with those projects, two of them have been canceled. The other two are continuing to be built, and they were supposed to be online a couple years ago. So, and if you look at the cost, the cost right now is $27.5 billion for two nuclear reactors, and that's not even including the $9 billion for the plants that were canceled. So, when you talk about nuclear, that, I just look at the facts, and the facts are that it simply is not a technology that could scale up in a reasonable cost in the way that we need to really tackle in, environmental challenges like climate change. Greg, as a practical matter, does that make the entire goal of the Green New Deal suspect? Because can we get to a world of uh, emission-free generation of power without nuclear being a substantial component? I read, actually, that like, something like 20 percent of existing power for homes and businesses comes from nuclear power now. Well, we get about 20% of our electricity from nuclear power, but only 6% of our energy in this country. So it's actually really a small part. And if you look at what's happening in the rest of the world, or even here in the United States, other carbon-free technologies are cheaper in many cases or getting cheaper than nuclear. And if you, you think about the cost of a, you know, $27.5 billion for two nuclear reactors, there has to be a cheaper alternative because that's some of the most expensive power that exists in the world. So when you look at what's really going on here and in other parts in the world, there are things that are happening with carbon-free electricity and, and things that I think are happening with battery storage, with other types of storage that really make it actually possible to, to address the kinds of goals and challenges that, that are in the, the Green New Deal. So I'm actually very optimistic that this is something we can do if we put the right emphasis on it. Uh, Greg, your book is overwhelmingly about uh, regulating nuclear power and trying to make it safe for all of us. It also is a broader story about uh, the role of agencies, particularly independent agencies in Washington, in regulating industries. Because in your area, for example, the, the utilities play a very, very large role in generating the electricity, using nuclear as well as other fossil fuels and things. Uh, what could be done to have more effective regulation of these industries? 
Well, I think one of the key elements is always going to be the selection of the political people that, that run these agencies. I worked at a commission and there were five people who were in, responsible for setting policy. All of those people were political appointees. And I think it's important that you have a spectrum of ideas and viewpoints represented on those commissions. That's why they're designed that way, so that you can have people thinking about these issues from a broad spectrum. What I found, especially at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, was, was that the commission tended to be dominant dominated by people who had a, a view of making sure that nuclear power survived rather than a view of, of making sure that nuclear power was primarily safe. And I think it's that kind of conflict that, that sets the wrong tone for an agency like the NRC. And you see this, I think, with all, with all these kinds of regulatory commissions where there is a lot of influence from the industries that are regulated in terms of this political process of selecting commissioners through the congressional oversight that happens. Right. And that's part of the reason I wrote the book was to really bring that to light to let people know how that works.